Game 2 held in northern city of Japan, and Fukawa directly attacks Hirose Zanaguma. Now let's see the game. Hello everyone, it's Hidesh, bringing you Game 2 of the 51st OE title match sponsored by the Alliance of Newspaper Companies. Now it's Game 2. Well, Fukawa has been losing so many games, so many major title games in a row, so he has to stop this momentum. And, you know, he has black pieces to use this time, so he has to stop it now. And, yes, he has to stop uh, this Hirose's Ranger Rook Anaguma. And you know what? What he came up with for this game? Well, he used an amazing strategy, a uh, very amazing way to uh, attack directly on Hirose's Anaguma. So, now let's take a look at it. Okay, so uh, Black played pawn 7f, while Hirose played 3d, and 2f, 4d, clearly signaling a classic type, ra classic type ranging rook, which probably be a Anaguma castle. Okay, uh, let's see, 4h, rook 4b. Fourth by Ruck. Now King goes to Castle. 6h, 6b, 7h, 7b. Okay, pawn 5f, 0, 3b, and gold 5 is from the right. And now White's King even goes to 8b, uh, going to Castle. Now, of course, uh, uh, we know there are two major options Mino Castle or Anaguma Castle, but of course, he's going to go into Anaguma and Fukabura. Uh, here now pushes the edge pawn up to 9f. Well, kind of saying, well, you're going to go into Anaguma again, right? So if you're going to, just do it now. Okay, so Hirose does that. I'm going to do that. Let's 9b. Okay, now, after seeing uh, this move, you know, after making uh, confirmation that what goes for Anaguma, well, here we see what Fukuda came up with. That's amazing. Bishop to 6f. Well, very straightforward strategy. He's aiming at this edge. Yeah. Well, you can easily see that white's gonna, uh, sorry, black's gonna attack on the edge. Of course, even adding a knight there. Well, and to tell you the truth, uh, white's uh, gonna make a vanguard pawn and then attack the king's, I'm oh, sorry, you know, hc square. It's very uh, known to be the weak point of Anaguma. And you know what? What is more, yes, he's going to use this rook to attack the edge too. So, well, you can see that Fukuda is so serious about beating this guy's Anaguma. He goes directly on his head. Well, uh, actually, we often see this kind of strategy in amateur games. You know, let's say your your friend uh, he's very good at playing Ranger Rook Anaguma. And, uh, well, you sometimes use this strategy to uh, beat him. But, well, this is a professional game, and it's even a title match. So is it going to work out? Well, if this strategy were to work out well, then Ranger Rook Anaguma has to disappear from professional world. So uh, let's see whether it's going to uh, work out or not. Okay, now, uh, why will basically uh, move the king to 9i, that's what, 9a, what, that's what you think, but, well, you have to be careful. Actually, this bishop is not only aiming at this square, it can then move to this square uh, with one move, so white has to be careful. Yeah, he has to play zero 4c. Because uh, if he castles, look at this, 2d square is uh, broken by black, so when he has to move the zero to 4c, uh, which means if you do that, uh, why well can uh, defend there? So, zero 4c, and then, okay, pawn to 8f, yeah. Just as I said, he goes for the king's head. Okay, now king castles, but pawn up to 8e, zero 8b, okay, zero 8h, okay, pawn to 7d, 2e, bishop 3c, and black goes 8d. Okay, white takes black, recaptures. Okay, he has made a pawn exchange, and uh, white will eventually have to drop his pawn to AC, I guess, but he doesn't do that for now. Uh, he wants to keep that in his hand, so gold to 7b. Okay, bishop goes back to 5g, 
not on 6f, directly to 5g, uh, aiming at 2d square. Now, usually, I guess you know, you probably know this tactic. Uh, tactic. You don't have to uh, defend the second file immediately, and you th you will think you can basically uh, castle like this. But uh, well, the reason is uh, most of you will know if you go uh, bishop exchange. Why has this tactic to uh, pin the bishop? Yeah. Well, that's kind of true, but uh, in this case. It's not going to work because black has a piece in hand from uh, eight, uh, eighth file, and black can drop it to here, uh, stopping the rook from coming over to 2b, and thus uh, he can break the second file. So, in this case, uh, you have to move the rook to 2b, actually. So, white did that. Okay? Now, pawn at 90, 5d, 3f, go to 5b, okay, knight to 7g. Okay, now you can see uh, all of his pieces are now aiming at uh, 9 c square. Okay, 60. Okay, rook to 3h, aiming at the third file, and of course, uh, this makes, in, uh, makes this option uh, more uh, realistic, okay? Now, in this position, white now has to drop a pawn to 8c. So he did that. Well, the reason is black will gonna get another pawn from the third file. That means he'll have two pawns in hand. That means uh, black can drop a pawn to 8c directly, and after the general take it, another pawn drop on 8d. So he can make a very strong foothold on 8d with simultaneously taking the initiative. So uh, white can't accept that. So white has to drop a pawn. So black goes for the third file. Uh, pawn takes, rook takes. He goes to 6c from the left. Uh, knight develops a 3g. So now uh, he chose to develop the knight, so that means uh, he gave up uh, this uh, option. Well, you know, the thing is this gold doesn't necessarily go up. Uh, that's one reason. Well, if the gold goes up, it's kind of uh, King Muso castle. Uh, in other words, peerless golds or golds unparalleled, unmatched gold, but let's just say King Muso castle. But what also has this Oh, sorry, black also has this uh, this option, silver to 8g, king to 8h, and gold to 7h. Uh, kind of silver crown type. Yeah, so he has two options, so maybe black give up about uh, moving the rook over to 9i. 9 9i. Okay, now bishop 4d. Okay, rook to 3f. He stabilizes his position. Okay, now uh, pawn to 6c. Opening the bishop's diagonal. Black cannot take it uh, because the knight will be taken. Um, so, uh, gold 6h upward, uh, so he uh, gave up making silver crown. Uh, black doesn't have the time to do that. So, now, look at this, the gold has moved, so the bishop's uh, diagonal, the going back diagonal, is blocked. So that means white should go for the bishop's head. So he pushed the pawn off the 5e, black takes, and then gold to 60, attacking the pawn. Okay, now finally at this position, black got three pieces in hand, so uh, finally he goes for the edge, pawn to 90, white takes, pawn to 9c. And uh, basically if black, if you, you know, if your opponent has two pieces in hand, you should not take with the knight, because black can drop a pawn, and the knight will be taken. And, well, taking with the silver is not very good either, uh, knight can jump anytime, the bishop can sack anytime. So not very comfortable. Uh, so white takes with lance. So knight leaps over to 80, attacking the lance. Okay, now, what should white do? Maybe white sh uh, has to block the bishop, for example. But he uh, chose to drop a pawn to 3. Um, clearly, uh, trying to get the rook out of this very nice rank of uh, F rank. So if you take the bishop, uh, you lose this diagonal, so, well, black took it with the rook. So, well, 5f square is now open, so white dropped the pawn to 5f. But this move uh, must have required some courage to do that, because, of course, once he does that, black is, of course, going to sack it. Of course, yeah, he did that. Okay, knight takes it, and lance takes 9d. Uh, has to drop a pawn, his only pawn in hand, but lands drop on uh, 9i. 
So, well, Black can uh, clearly break the ninth file. Uh, he has more pieces to attack there, uh, while White has only two pieces. So, uh, but the fact that White dropped that pawn, knowing about this uh, attack on the edge, well, he's uh, also confident about this too. So uh, what he did was king to 8a, uh, but black takes a knight, recaptures, and drops it to 3d, uh, forking the rook and the bishop. Well, saving the rook to here might be one option, uh, pinning the knight, but uh, how about how about it? Maybe too much to do. So uh, he had to just take with the bishop, oh sorry, silver, uh, rook recaptures, and uh, yeah, here's a very uh, great check on 8f. Well, very annoying check. Uh, when we running upward is one option, but not very comfortable, you know. Uh, so he chose king to 6i, but this is uncomfortable too. Uh, maybe Lance drop on 5g can come over, so this dangling pawn is uh, very annoying. But uh, what has what didn't do that? And why calmly move the bishop to five c? Well, this is interesting. He's clearly uh, saving this pawn. I mean, stopping the rook from taking the pawn. That means he's threatening a land drop that takes uh, that kills the rook. Oh, maybe he can drop it to three b or three a, whatever. Uh, so uh, black dropped the zero to three c. Rook runs and zero to four d. Amper mode. Okay, uh, but now white drops a lance to 3a. Okay, now, what if black takes it? I'm from white attacking the gold. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Well, lance will take the rook. Uh, silver promotes. Lance takes, silver takes. Well, you know, black, white can drop a rook to uh, force black to make, uh, uh, use his piece for interposing piece. So, not a very good decision for black to do that. So, he calmly dropped a pawn to 3c. Well, he didn't uh, drop it directly to uh, 3b to uh, keep attacking. So, white has uh, got another turn here. And, uh, well, there are some options. What about bishop to 7i running away and defending the square? Well, see if we can promote attacking the gold, but gold can simply run and... Uh, I can now aim at this skewer later on. Well, what White didn't think about that, he just uh, simply took with the lance uh, and then Silver takes it, uh, but White's not going to simply take it with the knight. He drops the bishop to 5 uh, d. Okay, so what if the rook runs? Well, of course, White can block it, and after the rook runs, he can take the Silver. Well, there are some options. Right? If uh, black goes here, uh, maybe this I will proceed like this. That's one option. Uh, what, what about running to here? Well, he takes it, and you know, once the bishop is uh, right next to each other like this, black can drop a lance there, of course. But white can take it, take it, and bishop can attack there. So, oh, and look at this. Uh, Every square are protected. And uh, what about running to 5f? Well, maybe after the knight takes, this bishop can later on attack the rook. So, actually, black thought uh, it's not a good idea to uh, save the rook here. I mean, let the rook escape. So, he dropped the lance here. Uh, yeah. And white will take it, black recaptures, and he drops the silver to 3b, so he can win that lance. But once black made a dragon, uh, black is very strong too. And at this position, uh, instead of uh, saving the dragon, he moved the dragon to 4b. Well, great. Well, uh, he's threatening this check, so uh, white has to take it. Uh, black recaptures, attacking the bishop and the silver. Uh, bishop runs 60. Well, white is up material actually, but black's attacks very fierce. Okay, now, at this position, black calmly dropped the pawn to AG, uh, trying to get rid of that knight. Okay, but white makes a very good move too. Silver to 3c, attacking the lance. Well, lance of course runs to 4c. 
again attacking the Sea Rock. But uh, the reason this move is great is that now the Rook is defending around this rank. Okay. Now pawn 3f. Uh, black takes the knight. White takes the knight. Sabre recaptures. Okay. Now finally, you can easily see that there is this rook fork. But if you simply do that after rook king runs, and if you take it, well, your attack is too slow. You know. So that's not pretty good. So what he did was he sacked the pawn to 5g, uh, trying to uh, undermine black's peace structure and drop the rook to 4i nearer to the king. Well, King Ron, well, so this means he's not going to take the silver anyway. So he thought uh, it's better to move the rook, put the rook nearer to the king. And he simply drops a uh, knight too. Well, you can see that. Yeah, it's here, of course. 8d uh, threatening a fork. But black calmly uh, ignores it and drops a bishop to uh, 60. <laughs> Great move. Uh, white took this pawn in 7f. But at this instant, when the pawn is taken, black can anytime drop a pawn there. So uh, that's a good point for black too. Okay, uh, black takes a gold on 60. A very, very good thickness on the king's head. Uh, this is strong. Uh, well, black's king is okay. White takes the silver, king recaptures, silver drop on 7i, king runs, king takes a gold, king takes, and rook takes a lance. And what is important is, it is not a threat made yet. Well, black has to be careful about this dragon check, but it's not a mate yet, okay? Uh, but, you know, if you uh, carelessly go keep attacking, for example, and if you just uh, clear off the pieces, well, it's a checkmate, actually, uh, with this knight drop. So black has to be careful. He can't give a knight so easily. And, uh, well, this is where black uh, played great. Pawn to 5d. Block in this diagonal, thus making the escaping route for the king uh, anytime. And what is more important, he made this square available for, uh, for the horse to attack the dragon and also cover this very nice square for the dragon to check, okay? But now white played pawn up to 70, attacking the knight. Well, this is interesting. Once he takes the knight, it's a checkmate. So, uh, yeah, he's aiming for the knight. But the horse to 5e, e, attacking the dragon. Okay, uh, dragon takes the lance on 1a, 1i, sorry. Okay, now here, black reads everything and goes there. Knight on 9c sacrifice. Okay, uh, white took it, but here's the cool move. Silver sacrifice on 8b. Uh, cannot take it, of course. Um, it's a checkmate. You can see that. So uh, white runs. Well, but at this position, black suddenly uh, made his own king safer with gold to 5f. Well, once black did that, well, uh, all of a sudden, black skin is so safe because, well, look at this thickness along uh, the mid rank. But I guess black should have done that earlier before uh, he sacks the knight. Well, well, why not uh, just do that now? Uh, he just sacked the knight and then did that. A little bit strange, but maybe it's okay. Uh, Lance drop on 5a, but very good counter attack on 5c. Uh, it's a threat made, gold drop on the 6a. Uh, so white has to defend that. And he did uh, gold to 8b. Well, but here's a great pawn drop on 7b. Focus pawn. And uh, if you take with a gold or a rook, it's checkmate with a gold drop on a uh, 6a. So white took it uh, with the king. Well, with the bishop, maybe another pawn drop on 8, uh, 7c. So he actually drop uh, take with the king. Okay, now here knight drops to 80. Okay, white dropped the knight to 7f. King runs to 5g. Okay, dragon checks. And at this position, uh, black has read everything. And he now dropped a gold to 5h. White has to save the dragon uh, here. Uh, black has read everything. He now finally took the zero uh, 9c.
Uh, okay, so has to take it. But Silver Drop on 7C, and here now seeing this move, why Hirose resign? Well, it's a uh, checkmate, but the following moves are pretty long. Actually, uh, White has now round to 7A, and uh, Pawn Drop. Well, if you take with a bishop, the uh, rook's defense is blocked, so maybe uh, silver on promotion. Uh, so it's a checkmate easily. Uh, so he has to take with the rook. Okay, take it with the rook. So he recaptures. Uh, has to take with the bishop. Well, the bishop is uh, s saving these both two pieces, but here's great sacrifice. Uh, if you take it, rook drop. So he has to take with a bishop, so uh, that means this square is open. Uh, king should run. What about pawn drop? Well, it's a checkmate. Uh, whatever white does, uh, discovery, checkmate. So, well, congratulations from Fukuda. And, uh, well, his strategy worked out. So what is Hirose going to do in the next game? Uh, he has to find a way to uh, deal with this strategy of Fukuda, right? So, uh, and win count is now 1 to 1. He tied the score. Now it's getting more and more exciting. Uh, so, let's well, keep watching this title match, alright? Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.